can the individual mitigate this onslaught of plastics? Like, okay, don't drink water in plastic water bottles. Don't heat your food up in plastics in the microwave. Don't put them in styrofoam takeaway containers. Like, don't, are there key thing, a reverse osmosis filter on the house? Or is it like, what, what do you recommend as some simple things here? What, what do you think? Okay, so you, you go, you, you wrote about this. I mean, I think that step one is just understanding how much plastic is in our environment. Like, we've accomplished step one. Thank you, you guys. My pen. You guys got the water <laughs> bottle. I, br- you know, the our sheets, Team. our clothing, what our food is packaged in, the water. You know, it's okay. it's 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 all over the place. And again, I actually go back to one of the best things we can do is actually start by eating real unprocessed food from the farmers market okay. because right there. You don't have plastic packaging Got it. on your food. Um, you are going to be cooking fresh food. That it's you know not covered in all of this, um, and so that's and and also it's going to help you with more of your detoxification pathways in the body. Although I'd like I'd love to hear from Dr. Lee if you can even detoxify the plastic in the body. But can you doc? Is it like mercury? But, you can remove but it. Clean you know, food you, and you water. You know what? Listen, we we I don't think we understand how our body really pl- processes or clears out plastic, but we have to. Otherwise, we'd be all plastic people. We'd be like, uh, you know, Barbie and Ken. Right. I mean, if we eat a credit card every single week, all right, and we don't poop all of it out, and it's in our body, somehow our body must be able to break that down. I just don't think this is such new, this is a new area of pathology, not just a new area of science. Like, I, I think the liver contributes to it, which uh, is why understanding how well your liver works is your an liver important really uh, function yes, yeah. for your doctor. You want to have a good, by the way, all this idea of like enemas, detoxing, all that also is kind of bunk. Your liver is the best detox you've got working for you. And so you want to have a good, healthy liver. Um, I, you know, um, I think we poop some of it out. We pee some of it out. Okay. You know, by the way, the, some of the people, you know, that study doing the plastics yeah. uh, from uh, carbon out the blockages in your neck, they actually believe that some of that plastic got into the body, not just with food, but from inhalation. They believe we breathed oh, it in. God, I thought you were going to say beauty products going through the skin. We're breathing well, that too. in. Do you have a sense, Dr. Lee, from the research of like what exposures seem to be driving up the plastic the most in the body? I don't know. That's a, you know, um, this is, I think that we're going to be finding this out over the next couple yeah. of years. Um, I can tell you that Some I've started seafood, to talk right? to food um, distributors and food manufacturers and, and, challenge them to measure the amount of microplastic in their food. For example, olive oil is a is a healthy oil, right? It's got um, oleic acid. It's got good stuff for hydroxytyrosol. Olive oil. Olive oil. Extra version. Early harvest. Carnicky. Told from Doc. Okay. You gave me multiples, so, so, but the Carnegie is so, so, the one I stuck with Doc. So, so listen, there are olive oil uh, distributors, manufacturers, companies that actually measure whether there's microplastic mm. in their oil. I'm all for that. If you can, If you can show me a good food that's already healthy for you that I'm going to put into my kitchen and you can up my own game by showing me that there's no microplastics in it. I'm going to go for that one. Uh Right. I mean, so I think that this is what we need to be able to um, ask the food industry. You want to make us feel safe, even if a healthy food measure the amount of microplastics, prove to us that somewhere in that process, you're not getting pieces in there that I'm eating. Mm -hmm. That that's something that, you know, we should be asking our manufacturers to do. Are there any, is there anything else you think we haven't really touched upon? Because my my takeaway from all of this is it's common sense. Like, don't take, don't take pills you don't need. Eat as clean as you possibly can. Get a water filter. Drink water from a glass. Like, use green products in your home. Try to sleep. Put the fucking phone down sometimes. Get some sunlight. And even though... There's not a magic bullet that you guys keep saying, like, Jill, it just doesn't work that way. Okay, fine. It's this toxic onslaught. Okay, fine. Is it also then, can I rely somewhat on the cumulative impact of me making these small changes in these areas you guys are talking about to to even push this cancer down the road 10 years, 20 years, so that the science has advanced enough to to pick me up kind of when I catch it and or to learn how to catch it early, which you, know, you both told me 50% of the care. I don't remember the exact number, but that's so, so important. Not when I have blood in my stool. Mm-hmm. Um, is there anything else that I'm not thinking that we haven't talked about that, that we would warn people about that 
that that's like, you know, this, this devil thing. Parabens. <laughs> you know, I would actually say something that <clears throat> that Dr. Means talked about earlier is sleep. Uh-huh. Because we because sleep is something that, you know, we don't think a lot. Nobody teaches us how to sleep. We are born, you know, learning how to sleep. And yet we sort of need to have sleep hygiene. We need to learn how to actually, um, you know, take care of our body. So while we're sleeping, even though we're phys- we may think that we're physically inactive. In fact, there's a lot going on under the sheets, so to speak. <laughs> our brain is detoxifying. Our gut microbiome is resetting. Our inflammation is kind of being fought, the is being turned down. Our immune system is being groomed. There's a lot of important things, and mo- and many of us, including women who are actually having you know issues with hormone swings and everything else, you know they're they're not get we're not getting good sleep. And by the way, the more stress the world is, and the more that we're exposed to it, the le- the poor the more poorly we're actually sleeping. And so I think that sort of you know, this I, I always think about the things that are hidden in plain sight, uh. right? I mean, uh, I think sleep is something that we haven't talked about yet in detail that's worth discussing in terms of what actually happens that can improve our metabolism, improve our anti-inflammatory pathways, improve our gut health while we're sleeping. And back to you, Casey. (laughs) Keeping it real with Jillian Michaels.